Hi, I'm Amy Whalen, and welcome back to Table Flipping Housewife. Today we're going to take this old entertainment center and I'm going to start fixing it up to be either a liquor or a coffee bar. I have a lot of ideas for this piece. Uh, it certainly needs a reno. There are a lot of features about it I'm not crazy about. I don't like this decorative trim and I was just delighted to find out it easily pops off. I do know for sure I will be getting rid of this horrific hardware and I'll also be getting rid of these doors altogether. I like these drawers at the bottom for storage, but I'm not crazy about this one. So this one's probably going to come out because I have a couple of ideas for the space up here. So if you're interested in seeing how I can transform this beast of a piece into a coffee or liquor bar, then just keep watching. The first thing that I did was I removed the cabinet doors. And then I removed what was left of the hardware. And what you don't see is I also removed that top drawer. Now I didn't realize earlier that I wasn't in the frame of the camera when I removed these, but all I did was I took my putty knife and slipped it underneath and just did that and they came right off. Now it is left some brad nails that I need to now pull out. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull all of these out and do the same thing at the bottom. Now these look like they're too flush with the wood. So what I'm going to do for that instead is just hit them all the way so that they're flush. I'm not going to use a drawer up here. So now I need to get this out. I tried with my other screwdriver too long of a handle and I was too short. So now I have a shorter handle and some leverage, and we'll take this off. I got this one started. This isn't going to be pretty. Here we go. Okay. Phew. Got that off. Then it was time to give the piece a very good wash. It needed a good degreaser, so I used warm water and Dawn liquid detergent and scrubbed every single surface of this piece. When I was done, I then rinsed it with water, clean water. I was very impressed with the inside of the drawers. They're nice and pretty, they're in great shape. So I knew I wasn't going to have to paint the inside, but look how dirty it is in there. And one thing about this piece of furniture, it has a very sweet odor to it as if someone had stored room deodorizer in it. I'm not sure, but I have to fix that. From the very beginning, I have been annoyed by that top section there because I feel like it's right where your head's going to be when you're making your coffee. So I, frankly, I really want to take it out, especially since I want to do signage to go in the back of the cabinet to hide that um, opening there, but also just to do a a sign there so but here's the thing if I take this out then there's gonna be this board that just ends so can I pop this stuff out and then since this comes to an abrupt end I can get another board to go all the way down just to it doesn't look like it's not supposed to be there I think I'm going to do it. All right, so as I thought, this comes down, I'll take all those out of course. What I'll do, just so that it looks more finished, is get some more of these, is that a one by two? And cut a length so it goes all the way down on both sides so it doesn't look so unfinished. 
I am much happier. I used some Durham water putty for the first time to fill in the holes left behind from the hinges of the cabinet doors, from the holes from those brad nails that held the decorative trim and any other place that there was a ding. I applied it with my putty knife and let it dry. I had already pre-measured the wood trim and what I'm taking the time to do right now is make sure that the blade of my miter saw is gonna come down at my pencil mark. That's why I'm fiddling with it. I cut two of these. Here's the decorative trim. It was very thin. So I applied that blue tape where I knew the area where I was gonna have to trim it. That blue tape keeps that thin wood from splintering and cracking with the miter saw. Now, even though I measured more than once, one of those wood pieces is too short. So I'm showing you here, I cut a piece of a large tongue depressor and I'm using that as a shim. So I glued it in place right under that piece that was slightly too short. I don't know how that happened. And then I go and add that wood piece, that one by two on top of that shim. And then it was a nice snug fit. where my wood piece meets the what was left at the top of that furniture, I also filled in with some Durham water putty just so that there wouldn't be a crack there. After I had glued that piece in place, I used my brad nailer with a one inch brad nail to staple it to the side. I then did the same thing to the other side and didn't need to use a shim for that one. You'll see where I used that putty on the side of the cabinet, the inside of the cabinet. It had holes where you could adjust a shelf, so I wanted to fill all those holes too. As I'm gluing this in place, I realize I don't have my level, or is it a leveler? So I just kind of eyeballed it and ended up taping it and looking at it from a distance, I made some adjustments. But I ended up actually using my brad nailer to, to do that as well, to adhere it to the back. Here I'm using 220 grit sandpaper wrapped around a sand block, and I'm sanding the areas where I had put that Durham's water putty. It's dry now and I'm now sanding it smooth. I then got my electric sander because I wanted to give a good scuff sand to the entire piece so that when I went to prime it, the primer would have something to grip onto. So the entire piece was lightly scuff sanded, including the drawers. Now, as I may have mentioned earlier, the piece had a very sweet smell as if someone had stored room deodorizer in it. I didn't like it. So I got some clear shellac based primer. It's a good odor blocker. And I completely sprayed every surface of the drawers, the sides, the underside, the inside, they were all sealed so that you wouldn't smell that sweet strawberry scent. I also used that same spray to go on the inside in there so that that wouldn't have any odor eking out either. Then it was time to prime the whole piece. I'm using Zinzer Bin. It's a shellac based primer, really good for stain blocking and for odor blocking. It's an oil based paint. So I'm using a chip brush that's inexpensive that I can throw away to fill in those little nicks and crannies and then a disposable roller head that I could easily throw out when I was done too. So the entire piece was primed. So it's finally paint day and I feel as if I'm gambling because in the Atlanta area we've had really weird weather the sun will be out and we'll have a rain shower. So 
I don't know, I just have to bite the bullet and go. But before I paint this, I do need to lightly sand down any imperfections in the primer, any little buggies or anything that may have landed in the primer before it dried. I'll lightly sand that down, wipe it off with a damp rag, and then I'll be ready to paint. I found some leftover paint from a previous project that I'm going to be using here. It's a semi-gloss white. It was very thick. So even though I always add water before I put it in my sprayer, I actually added a lot of water here. It needs to be thin enough to come out the sprayer. And you'll see too that I'm adding the water as the paint is going through the filter. You need to filter your paint before spraying so that there aren't any little pieces that block the, no block the nozzle. Now I noticed after the fact that I'm going left to right here on this one side and that was wrong based on the direction that my nozzle was pointing. When I did the second coat, I was sure to go up and down on that side to get a better coverage. You can adjust those nozzles and you just have to make sure you're paying attention to whether it's vertical or, hor or horizontal and that helps you determine if you need to go back and forth or up and down. Right here, I'm doing the inside of the cabinet and I knew I would definitely need my respirator for that, so that's why I stepped out to put that on. One thing I learned this time spraying this piece of furniture is that when you first press the handle on the sprayer, I have a Wagner Flexio 590, the paint spits out in little dots and I learned that if I spray first off of the furniture and then bring it toward the furniture, I can eliminate that spit paint. And it just goes on super smooth and just Awesome. You'll notice I do that here. When I'm spraying the top, you'll notice I'm spraying in the air first. And then I come down on the furniture. Again, that eliminates getting those little spatters of paint when you first depress the nozzle. I then sprayed the back. As you know me, I like every surface to be clean and pristine. I'm using a th here that's meant for drawers so that when you spray, you don't get an overspray inside the drawer. This was the first time I was using it and I wasn't a fan, it was very thin and it kept tearing as I was covering all of the uh, drawers. Look at the upper right, there's a big hole there and I ha would have to put tape over all the holes. I'm not a big fan, but nonetheless, I wanted to give it a try. So I spray painted all of the drawers too and I gave the drawers and the cabinet two full good coats. That day, I also took some drawer handles that I had purchased from a garage sale. You'll see on this pop picture that pops up, it's gold. I bought these, about 20 or 30 of them for two bucks at a garage sale. They happened to be the exact size I needed for the existing holes in the drawer. So I spray painted them. The only spray paint I had was semi-gloss and I wanted a flat black. So after the semi-gloss black spray paint dried, I then sprayed it with that matte finish to get that unglossed look. And then I attached the handles. Then I wanted to add some cup hooks. That's the last thing I did. I pre-drilled a teeny tiny hole and then I screwed the cup hooks in using a drill bit to get the last few turns. And then I was done.